little bit further detail with the addendums here, because um, this is a uh, real pain in the butt for me. Um, in the show, uh, Penn and Teller Bullshit, um, they actually said about Bjorn Lundberg's work, so somebody else took a look at the exact same data and came to very different conclusions, as if that all of a sudden cast out onto environmentalism. Just because somebody looks at the same data and comes to different conclusions does not necessarily mean that um, it's good. That it's good. I mean, for example, uh, if one wanted to stretch that analogy, we could say, take a look at okay, um, well, we could take a look at, some, at the very same data, and people could deny that the Holocaust ever happened, as some people do, or um, people could take a look at the same data which um, inspired Darwin to uh, come up with the theory of evolution, and say like, oh, we we must believe that God created the universe because of all its majesty. I mean, like this is one of the biggest arguments of theism versus atheism, you know, uh, about the majesty of the universe, you know, like. You know, and the, I mean, like you know, the, the the you know, just because somebody comes to a different conclusion about the data does not mean that the first conclusion is automatically wrong, or that either conclusion is right. You know, um, you know, I mean, like the very very bad arguing style that was being used here, and you know, I'm you know, I'm concerned about you know, I've said before that that correction of skeptical arguments is necessary. You know, we have to be constantly evaluating our own arguments to be able to handle this, and. You know, and I'm not going to accuse Penn and Teller of, you know, of purely libertarian biases or what have you. I'm going to, you know, like a lot of people do, even though they may have to be members of the Cato Institute, and that's probably how they got easy access to that expert they interviewed from the Cato Institute. You know, it does have benefits there. But no, I think the real problem is the fact that those two just simply did not check, think to check. You know, they they thought like, okay, we have Bjorn Lomberg, we have another expert, that's all we need. They didn't think to check for scientists who might have actually been saying stuff on the other side. They didn't think to, you know, like they said, uh, like scientists are... You know, uh, the scientists at one point who were saying global warming, you know, cooling are probably now turning around saying global warming. They never talked about global cooling or, or an ice age. That was a myth perpetuated by the public. And on top of that, the fact that, you know, and what they should have said was, okay, well, if these scientists are saying this, why go to the environmental journalists or representatives of the environmental groups? Go directly to the scientists who are saying this now. You know, go to them. Go get the best info on the other side. You know, they're not actually taking a look at these science, you know, they've got and they've got a statistician. Um, they've got, you know, Bjorn Lombard is not even, a, you know, is not even a scientist in these areas. The um, the minister, the head of natural resources of the, of the Cato Institute, is a member of a libertarian think tank. You know, the argument was almost one-sided. Like they didn't actually go to the scientists on the other side and try to see what the actual science said. You know, just because the, um, you know, I mean, like they they took a look at what the Cato Institute's interpretation of the science was, but they didn't go straight to the scientists. And you know, and this scares me. This is a, you know, and they did the exact same thing with parapsychology. They didn't take a look at both the opponent and the skeptical arguments, you know, at the top level of it. They got an astronomer, you know, they got an astronomer to say that, you know, this had been researched for years and nothing had uh, been found. You know, this was, it was an appeal to authority. They used appeal to authority arguments in both cases. They used, you know, you know, I'm, I'm becoming, you know, I'm, well, I hate to say it, but, you know, this sort of argument against, you know, if we start resorting to this appeal, sort of appeal to authority and, uh, you know, appeal to authority straw man, um, you know, straw man is also, um, straw man is also, uh, is by definition, is twisting the argument to a, uh, or attacking an, argu uh, an argument by its weaker form. And by doing so, what they did was they got somebody who was not necessarily an actual scientist in the area. They, what they did was that they picked, yeah, sure, they got the representative. What they did was that they got the, you know, they got the weakest one of the bunch. They didn't ask, you know, scientists who were going to the environmental movement. They didn't take a look at any of that. They didn't take a look at what the IPCC had been saying at the time. You know, like they said, some people say that global warming doesn't even happen at all. They just simply said there was a controversy amongst the science. Well, if you're wanting to go that, go straight to the source of the data. You know, go into technical details, explain that, you know, if there really is a controversy. They didn't. They just simply gave it as a categorical statement. This is a half-hour show. This is a half-hour show, and it's a... You know, it's a half-hour show, and they're not even—they're not even going into proper detail here. I mean, like this—you know—it's amazing the sort of crap that's coming out of the—you know—it's amazing the sort of crap that my fellow skeptics are, are, are willing to resort to in order to debunk uh, stuff that may be contrary to, to their beliefs, or if it's not contrary to their beliefs, they're—they're they're willing not to do their homework and accuse other people of not uh, of not doing their homework. It's not hypocritical. It's just—it's just they're not doing—you know—they're not doing justice to. I'm sorry, I'm trying to avoid becoming emotional over this, but, you know, I mean, like, I've got exams I have to study for. My calculus exam is tomorrow, and I've got, you know, I've got calculus and chemistry exams I've got to work on, but, you know, 
I have to do this video now because if I don't, I'm likely to forget my point. My point is is that this connects to bigger issues. You know, the fact that Penn & Bullshit you know, did this show, they haven't updated since then, and there's still a large movement of people who, you know, despite the overwhelming, you know, will not, you know, despite the the fact that the best hard data on this issue right now is, you know, is is that there is, you know, the global warming is happening, that we have sped up a natural phenomena, and that, you know, we are going to cause, uh, you know, a large chunk of melting. I mean, like, you know, they say like, oh, well, you know, the, the, the temperature's only risen by, uh, you know, uh, by one by one degree in 100 years, and there hasn't been that much in terms of, uh, you know, uh, major changes. The El Nino patterns have changed. We've had more hurricanes, uh, you know, per year, you know, overall. We've had hotter summers. We've had the we've had the melting of the glacier, uh, the glacier ice caps. You know, I mean, like there's there's plenty of evidence on this point. You know, even the um, even the Gulf Stream has gotten affected by this. I mean, there's some, the science is there. You know, it's it's all you know. You can even understand it from basic chemical laws. I mean, like you know, this is. This is very basic stuff, and that's why I explain that in Global Warming, look at the science behind it, you know. I explain this in great detail, you know, and some people are even still skeptical on it, and, you know, it's sort of like, or they say, like, oh, you know, this is not, you know, it's only, like, risen by half a degree in the last hundred years, or, you know, two degrees over the last while, you know. And it's sort of like, yeah, well, what, before that, what was the major uh, uh, raise in degree? One degree over ten, one degree over a thousand years? One degree over ten thousand? You know, the, the, the rates were a lot slower before we started interfering. And that was, you know, in 1400 and later. I mean, like, we started major fossil fuel stuff in, in the Industrial Revolution back in the 1900s. But we started with gun, you know, we started shipping some of this stuff in, you know, during that period, you know. Like the, you know, we, we started seeing a bit of a rise, and then it started getting even worse after the, you know, and, and more specifically after the Industrial Revolution started. I mean, like, there's, the graphs are there to prove that, you know. The, you know, the, the data, you know, from NASA, from, from, the, from the various, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, temperature recording stations from, uh, from, you know, both from the CO2 levels rising. Uh, and it's not just confusing correlation with causation. There are laws that go into this. Infrared absorption, for example, uh, connects to the, molecular th uh, to the kinetic molecular theory of gases, connects to the universal gas laws, connects to vapor pressure. I mean, like, you know, this, this is all, I've all explained, I've explained this all before. There's plenty of data on this textbooks, you know. You know, it's not that hard to understand how it applies, you know. I've even provided sources for how to calculate it yourself. So you can go through, do the conversion rates back to, you know, stuff like that, and then learn how to calculate the moles through. It's like, it's not that difficult to do. You know, it's not that difficult. And, I'm sorry, but, you know. My bottom line, and I'm going to summarize this once and for all. As skeptics, we have to be better evaluating our evidence, okay? We have to be aware of the evidence around. We can't just say, oh, there's just a controversy, so therefore we're not sure yet, or something like that. No, we have to actually evaluate the actual data and take a look at what the peer-reviewed literature is saying, not what the popular sources are saying, not what some of the various experts are saying, what the actual peer-reviewed literature is saying. You know, and Dawkins claimed this in relation to uh, psychic phenomena in his, in his uh, recent film, The Enemies of Reason, um, but there's a clip uh, from Rupert Sheldrake uh, I came across um, where apparently, you know, I, like they say, like, take a look at the actual evidence. Well, there was never actually any evidence uh, in relation to uh, the psi phenomena even mentioned. None of the actual peer-reviewed studies, either pro or con, except for this one to, uh, token trial that uh, Dawkins did on dowsing. And even if dowsing is disproven, uh, or even if dowsing is, you know, evidence for dowsing is found, that still doesn't eliminate automatically all the other forms of ESP. You have to take each ability on a case-by-case -case basis. And then, you know, take a look at the state of the literature, and if it, some of it looks good, do further replications of it, and if that fails, then it's debunked. You know, like what they're doing with the Gansfield right now, you know, in terms of telepathy. It's still in a flux state. We don't know. For telepathy, the jury is still out. For precognition in terms of uh, anything but presentiment, I think we can pretty well dismiss. For presentiment, the jury is still out. For micropsychokinesis, the jury is still out. For, um, you know, for clairvoyance in a large chunk of cases, the, journey, the jury is also still out, you know, it's, you know, some of these areas are still in constant state of flux um, in terms of replication. There's a lot of issues that need to be dealt with. For global warming, the jury is in on this one. It is happening by anthropogenic sources. You know, the jury's still, the jury's in on this one. Uh, for, for species extinction, the jury is pretty well in on this one. You know, um, you know, it's going to happen. You know, climate change effects. Like the, the science is hard on this. And the libertarian think tanks, you know, debunking this sort of thing based on, you know, and I'm, I'm going at the Cato Institute, I'm not going at Penn and Teller here, but, you know, but the, the, the methods that they gave, you know, in Bureau Lombard's work, you know, it was debunked. Like, you know, this is... Do I have to say this any further? We have to evaluate our arguments, otherwise we don't know what we're doing.